I got I'm starting to record because we're gonna get this all we're gonna get all this juicy content. Uh I'm about to get on my computer though. Hold up, let me see. Switch up. Oh, my computer, the background might change. Yeah, you'll probably have to, you just have to redo it on the, uh, on your computer. Oh, uh, uh, hold up. Let's see. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and introduce us. My name is Gerald Moore, founder of athletesandcannabis.com, uh, Ohio marijuana patient. Uh, advocate, activist, uh, former athlete. I guess I'm always an athlete, but Division One athlete, trial for the NFL. And then we got my guy Broderick. Broderick, you go ahead and introduce himself. Uh, how we doing, everybody? I'm Broderick. Broderick Randall Jr. Uh, currently business development outreach manager at Benelieves. Former uh, key patient consultant at. A, uh, dispensary in Ohio. I'm a board member of Sickle Cell Alliance Foundation. I'm a patient and an advocate, Sickle Cell Warrior. Uh, yeah, and uh, kind of continuing to try to find ways we can, uh, uh, you know, destigmatize this plant. Yeah, so that's essentially why we're here. You know, this is our first. Uh, zoom we've had plenty of conversations personally off the off the record i guess or off the air but uh you know we've seen a lot experienced a lot and so as young men we've realized in our in our region our area uh nobody's really speaking our language in terms of what's going on in the cannabis industry uh and so uh, we decided we were going to come together and really use our uh, our brains and our brands and you know our energy to really start a movement of education, uh, empowerment, uh, encouragement, inspiration, uh, and just you know de again like Broderick said, destigmatizing the plant uh, because over the last fifty years, however many years, um, so many things have happened in our community, the war on drugs, and how this thing has. Uh, really perpetuated our demise and then you know now you look at the legal market is sweeping the country uh, and being in Ohio we're in the middle of the country uh, you know huge market for uh, agriculture but huge market for just commerce in general uh, but when you look at the cannabis industry you don't really see us present in uh, the legal side of things uh, and we don't really see the restorative justice for those people that have been, you know, uh, incarcerated uh, for this plant. And now that we have an industry, you know, we don't really have the representation. We're not getting the education. Uh, we're not getting uh, a lot of, you know, the necessity, uh, the nece necessary resources to thrive um, and, and also to keep our uh, our families healthy. So. You know, we just decided we were going to come together, have different conversations uh, about what's going on, upload the content to our social media page, upload it to YouTube, uh, and really just continue this conversation because uh, it's definitely needed. Um, we had our first conversation uh, right before, I want to say, uh, right when COVID hit, right before COVID hit, um, with uh, some legislators and some people in the cannabis industry, uh, basically trying to create awareness uh, and so obviously with the pandemic, it's made it hard to meet in person. Everything has had to be virtual uh, with a new industry. Everything is very new. So all the laws uh, and regulations are all over the place. Uh, Broderick could probably speak a little bit more to that being, you know, business development side of things. But, um, you know, we really think there needs to be more transparency, you know, when it comes to the Board of Pharmacy, when it comes to um, you know, all of the different levels. Uh, you got anything to say about that, Broderick? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, like, I'm not going to say I know all the specific laws, um, hence the reason why I agreed to uh, try to do this, to to kind of go uh, one by one or 
not one by one, but like step by step and kind of do an overview of the written laws and uh, break them down. Mm-hmm. But uh, based off just from some of the uh, laws I do know and, you know, regulations written uh, or just kind of off the top of my head that are written, I do know that uh, there's a lot of uh, re- rules and regulations that kind of are like, aren't designed for the patient when if this is considered a medical plant the whole purpose of it is to be a medical a medicinal benefit for the sick and those you know qualified uh, to use it but it the way it's designed it kind of it, it seems like it's more focused on um, actual uh, profit over the patients so uh, such as, you know, the cost uh, that could be a bit more affordable for people. Well, just uh, getting the access. license, right? I mean, most most physicians are charging $250, you know, pretty much cash to get a license, right? 200 to $250 just to get a license. And then to get, you have to have a dispensary in your area, which a lot of people don't really have great access to the dispensaries because every community doesn't have, you know, some communities have a moratorium against um, cannabis. Um, So that's locking a lot of people out of being in close proximity. Uh, So if you don't have transportation, whatever, everybody has different, you know, uh, you know, means. So, you know, we have to look at the holistic perspective, right? You have to look at all types of patients coming from all different backgrounds. Um, and people need access. There's a CVS on every block. You know, there's a Walgreens on every block. There's a Walmart pharmacy. Uh, so when you're talking about medicine and you're talking about cannabis, you know, we need our we need our medicine to be almost on every block because we need to be able to have immediate access, right? I don't want to have to drive 25 miles, 25 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour to have to get medicine, you know? And when you're dealing with pain, when you're dealing with people that have different ailments and different illnesses, um, you know, those barriers uh, continue to perpetuate the pain and what you're going through, uh, especially when you look at an overall patient. So I think, you know, like we said, we have to really um, dive in deep on what, you know, is the purpose of this program? Is this is this program really meant for the patients and to help people, you know, live a better life? Or is this program just simply here to, you know, take all the money they can and, you know, don't care about the patient? Correct. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I couldn't agree more. Uh, uh, you know, it's supposed to be, as you said, as you stated, uh, about uh, providing a better quality of life and better, uh, you know, style of living a way of living, I should say, for those in need, the sick, um, you know, the, dis- the disabled folks um, that, you know, typically are out of options for, you know, using the Western style traditions, uh, form of medicine, or even those that are actually kind of on their last days that deserve to still go out, you know, uh, in a peaceful uh uh, you know, healthy or, you know, just well, more wellness way versus, uh, you know, drugged up, unconscious, not even coherent enough to to enjoy their last moments or days. And um, uh, I just feel like some of the words, like the words are powerful. Um, English language is powerful, powerful, but like the way it is written, as I said, some of the rules and laws, it's, it's kind of contradicting itself. Right. Because uh, it's called, you know, Ohio Medical Marijuana Control Program. But in so many ways, they are controlling exactly what and what, what not uh, the patients can and cannot do when truly we're all with different conditions and different uh, uh, illnesses. Uh, we. Uh, we may not have the same amount of requirements of a of the plant, right. so I feel like having the uh, the uh, 
similar or congruent of allotment, if, you know, that kind of hinders people actually benefiting from the plant or even learning uh, how to from, you know, the different forms of it, the different uh, education behind each forms. Right. Like there's, there's so many ways that uh, it's hindering instead of actually like uniting and uh, forming, you know, collectives of people that are able to like, you know, share their stories. Not saying, you know, freedom of speech people can't, but it's like, there's not even any like patient groups outside of the the dispensaries or the industry that are that you're able to like form technically like right. I mean you could do it online but what if we could actually like I mean I know there was COVID but before all of that if we were able to like have a social meetup not necessarily use our medicine there but we could meet up and talk network uh, well I mean and that's where you know you it comes to you know other states are passing you know, adult use, right? So there's all these different things happening all over the place. So it's like, what do we do? You know, what lane, you know, best benefits everybody, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, where I think we're in that, especially in Ohio, we're in that in between. I mean, we got states like Michigan where it's, right, it's adult use in Michigan. You got Illinois, you got New York that just passed, like, all these places are doing different things. And so uh, Virginia, uh, Virginia just passed. Uh, uh, so, you know, it's just, you know, we have to just decide which way we want to go and start to, you know, build that following because as I see it, nobody's going to do it for us. You know, we've seen it. Like nobody's really, you know, people that are in the industry, you know, have their, you know, they're going to take what they can get, but the masses are being hurt, you know, and like, right. And really in a medical program, you really can't judge like everybody's condition. You know, my level yeah. of pain tolerance is completely different than somebody else's level of pain tolerance. Right. So, you know, like you were saying earlier, that's tough to be able to put a cap on how much medicine a person can get. Uh, and then if somebody needs more medicine, the cost becomes way more. You know? and, and we're still, we're, due to the lack of research and not uh, education and technology, we're, I mean, there's technology out there for it, but because of the you know restrictions on by the government, we're still not able to even know all, all of the proper, like, uh, medicinal research that we could know right. uh, in ways that this plant could help but like instead of setting us up for potentially being ready to you know embrace the plant and just uh, accept it for the medicinal uh, uh, medicinal plant that it is it's almost like they tried to write it so that we could you know enforce uh, strictly you know, enforce this so that like only a certain you know crew, uh, group of people could actually truthfully truly enjoy it in a sense right. because uh you know there's i know that there's all sorts of people all 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 uh, de of all demographics and races that come in and participate in the program right but i mean you but worked at a dispensary right so you saw all types of people but yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, as far as like even, um, <clears throat> excuse me, participants, patients in the program, it, so many things vary from the the tra uh, transaction like amount or the, the product amount or you know or even like their our interaction with the patients could be based on all right, if they don't have so much money to spend, they want to make sure they get their bang for their buck. So they're going to, you know, come at come at you asking, like, what's the best this or what's that, you know? Like, so you can't really be mad either because technically, you know, if they can only afford so much, I, me too, I'm going to want the best, you know, uh, product that I could afford to, you know, try to get at, in that moment. Sadly, there was other, you know, people from demographics that could come in and didn't really necessarily bother to take the time to uh, get to know myself or the menu. They would just 
buy up the menu in a sense. And it's like, well, it's, some people can't quite do it that way. Like, so it, it's just so many different perspectives to see or even consider or even think about that I don't really feel the, the uh, members of the board of pharmacy considered or thought about. I wish they would have. I know there's moments where they provide a window for you to reach out and email them. But I, I, in my opinion, I think it could be a better, uh, op- uh, a better communication window, such as even allowing us to all like, or you know, setting a few days aside for people to come meet at a whether it's a bar or uh, some kind of public setting, right. um, or you know, uh, some kind of you know government setting, whatever they feel we're comfortable with, where people can come in and like talk to a panel of people and, you know, just pitch their opinion, truthfully, whether it's people that's working in the industry or uh, people that's a patient in the industry. Like, I think our voices are more important and valuable, not more important than theirs, but it's just like, it should be just as important. We're Well, technically we our voice is more important than them because we're the patient. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But we we literally without our money, without our disabilities, without our conditions, you know, this program there wouldn't be a reason for it. There so, wasn't and then I mean there wasn't even a program, what, two, three years ago, four years ago. Right. So and why not? If you're gonna do one, why not try to did you see make how, it did you see the did you see the number that they estimated for how many people they thought were gonna sign up for medical cannabis or medical marijuana in the first couple years? Uh, no, I actually didn't. They projected a very low amount. I can tell you that. So I don't know. But, you know, it's like, you know, yeah. alcohol is big here. Tobacco is big here. Uh, you know, so we got to understand what we're up against, you know, right. when it comes to you know, cannabis, because that's going to change a lot of industry, you know, like the lumber industry is going to be changing because you got, you got hemp. Um, And I think that's something we also need to talk about. You know, we can obviously talk about, you know, cannabis for medical purposes, but I think, you know, especially our community, we really need to talk about the broader scale of what the possibilities are with, you know, the cannabis plant, you know, because- When you talk about hemp, I mean, hemp is federally legal right now. So we can be in the hemp game, you know, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, and it's the cost of entry is cheaper than getting into, you know, the medical marijuana game. But, you know, you and I happen to be in those spaces. So we get to kind of see different things. Uh, But talking about that, would you uh, would you mind sharing where your picture is from and your background just for some context? Uh yeah, uh, uh this is uh him uh this picture of the him of grow facility kind of based in Dayton. Uh it's a tier two, I wanna say. Uh yeah, or yeah, tier two level. So it's one of the smaller smaller ends, but they're uh they're working on, you know, growing and expanding when possible. But they had a pretty solid uh craft grow going on and uh in my opinion i think like quality over quantity is definitely best you don't want to start somewhere too big and overdo it if you can't actually uh you know control it and that's not to go get off topic or go any um go too far off subject but you know that's another conversation but uh, I think it's all good. You know, that's I mean, that's the whole purpose of what we're doing. I think, you know, we get to come at this from a different angle that, you know, a lot of people don't come from, in my opinion. You know, we we can touch on all different things, you know, what I mean, and allow it to be fluid because we're living in a space where, you know, just like uh, Shikari Richardson. Right. She just got drug tested. You know, and she's on the world stage, but she ran in Oregon where cannabis is legal. And, you know, she she comes out and apologizes to the world as if she's done something wrong. Like, 
in no world where we, me and you can smoke perfectly fine that this right. girl, you know, could potentially ruin her career. Well, the sad part is that uh, the, 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 the media, uh, in my opinion, is they focus, and a lot of them, focuses on the like negative aspect of things. Uh, right. People are so lost and caught on the fact that she used an illegal substance, uh, like, you know, moments before her big moment. But it's like, truthfully, if you really all did the, did our research and studies and homework or whatever, uh, she used the safe, you know, one of the safer alternatives out there instead of going to grabbing a bottle of alcohol or taking some, you know, pills to try to help, help relax her mind or get her mind off things. Uh, and people are like, there's different react or different um, opinions to it and reactions, obviously. But I hope that this is a big awakening to the world, not just the cannabis community that like, okay, enough is enough. We need, we need to change the classification of this plant because it doesn't affect it. Clearly she's been, even if, this one moment she got caught using cannabis. That's not her first time using it. She's, uh, uh, she's been able to, uh, you know, moderate, you know, however, manage and use that to still get be productive. Cannabis doesn't make you not productive. That's the thing that people are trying to say, and, and the lack of those that are not educated properly try to say like, oh, it's gonna slow her down or make her lazy, but they really don't know. It could actually you know, open up her lungs or, or bronchi uh, bronchiolators and, you know, really actually make her even more prepared for the race. If we actually knew, or, you know, we're, we were more open-minded instead of closed-minded to the stigma that this plant has, I feel like uh, this, like, this wouldn't even be that big of a subject or deal. It'd just be like, oh, it, it, people should really be showing more empathy. Like, oh, she lost her parent. Jesus, she only she, she only used cannabis. It's not a, it's not the end of the world. Well, think about um, it. What about like, Michael Phelps? <laughs> right. Think about it. Most people, if you lose a parent, you're not performing at all. You know, like it's a lot of people. They lose a parent, bro. They can't be. They not going to work. They not showing up. They depressed. They down. She literally lost a parent, and then. Then did you hear how she found out? She found out from a reporter. Through the media, yeah. Like, who does that? You know what I mean? Like, that's a that's a lack of respect right there. You know, so that's you know, it's the whole situation that just irks me, and then especially being an athlete, you know, uh, the media just is they're like blood suckers. You know what I mean? Like, um, and you know, I think like Kwame Brown talk about it a lot too, but. We've just been so caught up in it, but as black men, we don't realize, man, we're uh, we don't have no voice. When you play in the sports arena, they freaking they muzzle you, you know. So you really don't hear from the athletes. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't take a stand. <laughs> yeah, you can't really take a stand because if you take a certain stand, you know what I mean. Oh, the fans don't like it, so then the fans gonna be telling the owners that they need to trade you or something like that. Or they're going to put you in the media, so then they crucify you in the media. You got Stephen A. talking trash. You got all these white dudes talking trash, everybody. And then, you know, they're defaming you. You know, they're calling out your character. You know, so they're saying, you know, now you got people that have never even heard of Shakiri Richardson, never even heard of people like Josh Gordon, would never know those people if it wasn't for their extreme amounts of talent and gift. And then they get on the world stage and everybody feel like they could just judge their whole existence. And it's like, bro, like weed is the least thing, you know, we, but we celebrate alcoholism. We celebrate, you know, Peyton Manning, you know, promote it. holding the beer, right? Like all these different things, like, you know, our, our, you know, their marketing purposes towards our marketing purposes, two totally different things. So I think it should, I think it's up to us, you know, like to really, you know, use our platforms, you know, use our, you know, our, our voice um, to really support, um, you know, those things that we support. Because again, as black men, when have we really ever had the freedom 
to have a platform like this to be able to create our own narrative, share our own stories, and then be able to upload it and share it to, you know, the world um, without having somebody, you know, looking over us to control us. Um, that's, that's a very, it's still a very new thing. So um, I think we got to continue to just exercise our, you know, our right, because I can tell you from being an athlete, not at the Olympic level, but college level is pretty big. You see it, you know, you don't see us at the top, you know, when it right. comes to, you know, everything going on on the business side of things. You know, you see us on the field, you see us on the court, you see us on the track. But when it comes to the marketing department, the business development, the ownership, the GMs, when it comes to these marketing advertising firms, when it comes to the news and media outlets and the ownership, of who's actually owning and distributing all the information, you know, we're really nowhere to be found. And we see this, you know, in the cannabis industry, right? I feel like this is something that we see in, um, you know, you can go in a dispensary and, you know, not really see anybody that looks like you. Um, right. you know. So I think those yeah. are some of the things that uh, we, we got to point out. I mean, honestly, from my experiences, I mean, you may here and there you see a few of us. Uh, you may be get, you know, you may get lucky to see a few of us working in the dispensary. But from my experience, a, a lot of people of color are actually the security working in the industry versus like in the like the real industry. So it's kind of like oxymoron. You're like what the hell? Like, like y'all in it, but. You protecting people that you know used to arrest or you know that's been continued to use it and never and not get in trouble. Right. But, uh, yeah, man, it's real weird. I've I've seen some uh, some security guards too. I'm just like it's a little different, but you know, I think I don't know, man. You know, when you I mean when you look at the nuts and bolts of how many people have been arrested for. You know, weed, small amounts of weed. And then you see that there is an there's an industry now, there's a legal industry, there's a legal market. And we just act like we weren't just locking people up. Right. And still locking people up for the same thing. Like, and then telling them, well, you can't do it like this. You gotta, you don't have a million dollars to open up a facility you just your ass up so like what are, what are your thoughts on like home bro what are your thoughts on that uh, i think home bro is just simply freedom of, of uh, citizens rights you know any any adult human beings rights it's, they should have they should mean why can't you grow your own food or medicine uh, you can cultivate your own beer or alcohol I don't see why you shouldn't be able to do that the same with a plant. I mean, you can, you know, have most other house plants or, you know, out, you know, uh, crops, whatever you may want to try to grow indoor or produce. Why can't you, or even herbs, why can't you uh, grow this herb? Uh, so I, I think it's something that just should be automatic almost. Sadly, it's something that people have to fight for uh, and people are getting in trouble for and, and don't have the right to, like, you know, some states, including ours, uh, believe that only the people with $100,000 plus to blow uh, deserve the right to own something like that. And I don't think that's fair, especially to those that are sick. As I said earlier, cost is definitely something that's major. So why not help the sick eliminate costs in their life? Not saying that every sick person could be able to go, hence why there's still room for all of us to be able to uh, participate and operate, because uh, there's still going to be the need for uh, facilities and, and uh, dispensaries to provide you know, legally clean tested medicine. But why can't the a home grower that's able to that's, that may have a condition 
participate with that same industry or uh, 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 those same companies. Like, in a sense, what if he could produce some crop uh, that's quality enough for her to be um, sold to patients as well? Right. Uh, that should be allowed, or, or even produce his quality or his crop and then get it processed by a legal facility. He should be able to do that and turn his medicine into other forms uh, by working with other other uh, uh, established businesses in, in the already industry. But it, it seems like they don't, it, right now they don't want a uh, community or you, you know the, the gathering of people to uh, working together to make right. better medicine a better lifestyle. So, I don't know. I definitely think homegrown should be considered and thought about, talked about, and supported for sure. Yeah, yeah, me too. But, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a grower per se, but I think you know having the ability to uh, to do that and even be able to learn uh, and take care of your own. I mean, provide your own medicine. Like, come on. Like, it's not like you're a scientist and you got like a meth lab in your basement. You know what I mean? Like if you got some fucking plants, if you got a, you got some seeds, some light, man, like you should be able to grow your own. Oh yeah, like let's say uh, in in the program you get a strain that you do enjoy, uh, but you can't consistently find it. Right. Or can't you buy the genetic and you know grow it yourself and be like, hey, I find something that works for me i'm gonna just now you know produce it myself that's so it's always around right uh, it, should, it should be well we, well, we know yeah. why they won't do that or they don't want to do that because you know that's gonna take away from some of that tax money well what are they doing with the tax money though like it's just, if, if you're gonna tax the sick or the poor we need to figure uh, out what's then why what are why the not help them? like give it give it back to them where uh, is the tax money from the Ohio Medical Marijuana Program. Where is it? Where is control it? Control Program. Don't forget control that word. What yeah. is it? The Ohio Medical Marijuana Control Program? Yeah. Yeah. You got to keep that in there because that's how they they wanted to emphasize that. Control. Know? Yep. That's the official name. O-M-M-C-P. We want to control you. Right. And they talking yeah. about if you have your cannabis card, they're gonna take away your right to carry your gun. Get out of here. Yeah, which to me sounds even more confusing because usually cannabis is so sought after that you may want to like if it's being or known in the public or you're out in the public buying your medicine, wouldn't you want to have be you know have some kind of uh, sense of protection, knowing that all right, I can. There is any trouble, I do have the right to have something to protect myself. For me, I, if there's any trouble for me, just simply going to get my medicine or having it on me from other people that might not be able to access it, or even the law. I'm not saying I need to have a weapon with the law, but I'm just saying in general. That's your right. It's, feel good. it's a human right. Just just as well as I should be able to grow, I should be able to pick and choose if I want to possess uh, a weapon. Not Obviously, there's a time and place to have it, but you should not be able to tell me I choose one or the other. Right. Get the hell out of like, here. I'm a grown-ass man. You better get the fuck on. It's just, so, again, that falls into the, the category of the control program situation. Yeah, and that's why that's why also we gotta speak up and we gotta start putting these events on because they just trying to control everything. You know, we gotta let them know they ain't in control of this. We ain't control of this. <laughs> yeah, we need enough people though. It's, it, it, the more people, the better. Like obviously, power to the people. But yeah, we can. Well, either like I said, I think we gotta get our generation. Or... Like that that joint yeah. we just on ain't gonna cut it. I tell you that. And we just need a we need a lot of people. Like yeah. we just need people to uh to people just to... really be open minded and, and also militant in, in their actions and, and like move. 
you gotta actually like take action, not just talk about it and uh, discuss it. Like, I mean, hence ourselves, we've had many discussions, but we're trying to continue to mix those discussions with actions because that's the only way to, you know, get kind of get it or see any progress. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, like, like we always say, you know, getting more involved, speaking, doing speaking engagements, uh, reach, reaching out to your uh, state representatives. So, you know, um, that's something that, you know, I think we have to really be educated on uh, how does, you know, these laws get changed, you know, obviously we can speak up and we can speak on social media, but actually reaching out to our state representatives, right? Reaching out and connecting with uh, people like Juanita Brent uh, and understanding how laws are made in Ohio uh, specifically, that will allow us to, you know, get things changed. And we have to reach out to all the state representatives. Uh, even if you call yourself a Republican or, a Republican or a Democrat, whatever, you have to reach out to anybody and everybody to get them to change their minds, right? Because at the end of the day, a politician's job is to be for the people. So whatever the people want, that's what the politician is supposed to fight for. Um, and so clearly, they're not getting the memo that you know patients want this medicine. Uh, and so, you know, there's a lot of different ways I'm sure they could be sabotaging that, but um, in the end of the day, you know, we all have to be accountable um, and there's different ways that we can connect. You know, you can send these people emails, you can call them, you can reach out to them via social media, Twitter, Instagram, uh, and the politicians have to respond. You know, they have to have their aides respond because if they're public, they're public servants, so, um, you know, I think that's something that we just have to continue to do, you know, as we continue to raise our voices, um, put, put our voices out there because you know, we see it. There's not many people speaking up about it from, from our vantage point. I mean, I don't know about you, but I know from my, my perspective, um, I'm always looking for more and more people to get involved in, you know, it just really doesn't seem to be a market for it. You know, people don't seem to want to talk about it. People seem to not know that there is a legal market, I guess, or, you know, that this is an opportunity for, you know, career advancement. Uh, this is an opportunity for health and wellness. Um, well, as I was sitting here looking at uh, Ohio's laws and administrative rules, uh, rule Three seven nine six five dash seven dash zero one on advertising. The Ohio Administrative Code uh, for the program. I I think that could be part of it. Uh, it seems like as we've stated earlier, on you know, it's just not just this one, but other rules and regulations. It's not designed for the patients. I, if they're not talking about it, or if you can barely advertise, like you know, anything. I don't think that they want this program to survive uh, or even, you know, do well because, you know, just to read from it, it says uh, a cultivator, processor, or testing laboratory should not use a name, logo, sign, or other advertisement unless the name, logo, sign, or other advertisement has been submitted to the department and the applicable advertisement fee has been paid. Materials submitted to the department shall include, but are not limited to, the following. A brief description of the format, medium, and length of the distribution, a verification that an actual patient is not being used on the advertising, verification that an official translation of a foreign language advertisement is accurate, Annotated references to support statements related to effectiveness of treatment and final copy of the advertising, including the video in a format acceptable to the department. Like, it just seems like basically they want to know, they need to know and want to know everything you're doing, and, the, and there's a fine or fee for it, no matter what. So, right. And me, you can't, I mean, that makes marketing. 
almost nearly impossible. Because right. if, I gotta, if, more. I, huh? if I if I have an idea for a product, and I mean we have social media these days, so I can have a graphic designer make up uh, make up something and put it on social media or putting put it on a, a billboard or something like that. That doesn't take any time, but if I gotta make my marketing, I gotta send it in to you. I gotta pay a fee. Like what? Right. What it, well, it, goes more, it, it goes more. It goes more. It goes more. So that was that was letter C. I'm gonna skip down to letter E. No cultivar processor or testing laboratory shall place or maintain or cause to be placed or maintained and advertise it of medical marijuana which I don't like saying, I'm gonna just switch that right now. I'm, you're gonna hear me switch the word cannabis because they got that wrong word. Uh, they got that word wrong as well. But anyways, no, an advertisement of medical cannabis or medical cannabis products, including paraphernalia in any of the following ways. Within 500 feet of the perimeter of a, of a prohibited facility, a game arcade where admission is not restricted to persons aged 21 years or older or a business where the placement of advertisement targets or is attractive to children as determined by the department on a billboard, on a radio or television broadcast, including a system for transmitting visual images and sound that are reproduced on screens and includes broadcast, cable on demand, satellite or internet program. On any held held handheld or other portable sign with respect to public places on a handbill, leaflet, or flyer directly handed, deposited, fastened down, thrown, scattered, cast, or otherwise distributed to any person, left upon any private property without the consent of, of the property owners or in a vehicle, public transit vehicle, or public transit shelter, or on or in a publicly owned or operated property. <laughs> Nigga, you Damn, can't bro. do nothing. What? You can't bro, do that sounds like, like, like what? I'm handcuffed. Yeah. But, but you can market alcohol, right? You can do that. The children still gonna see that. They're gonna see their oh, parents, the way yeah. they act off it. Yeah, exactly. So, like, come on, you don't want children to see this, but children can see alcohol and naked women and all this. They can listen to rap music all day, every day. They can watch these videos, but they can't see the plant. Like, come on, man. Come on, man. Yeah, it sounds like more of a restricting. Uh, yeah, they don't want, they don't want nothing folks. to get out. They don't want nothing to get out. I think they don't want certain people either to to be, uh, you know, uh, to progress or make, you know, advancement in, in an industry that, you know, we made, tech, we created and, and took the most, you know, uh, bullshit for our family, our families were ruined, you know, from Fathers being locked up and to uncles, grandpas, know, aunties. Yeah, everything. People losing their kids. Oh, they use they use marijuana. They use cannabis or plants. Like, get out of here. All the athletes that they've demonized and martyred their character for smoking weed. Oh, you just gotta stay off the weed, man. <laughs> They are like, come on, bro. Like, as an athlete, you know, and that's again, like, a lot of athletes don't even speak up, you know, because, you know, I think a lot of athletes get to the point where you're just like, man, you, you know, you know, you don't have the infrastructure, you don't have the ESPN, you know, producing, you know, uh, your narrative 24 7, 365. So I think a lot of dudes really just fade to back, fade to black, but it's, like we have to, athletes really got to start speaking up, man. Because at the end of the day, the way we train to perform to then entertain uh, is on another level. 
And so, you know, our bodies break down, you know, and so, you know, if you're in pain and cannabis helps you with pain, or if you've dealt with trauma and cannabis has helped you with your trauma or PTSD uh, or your injuries, you know, broken fingers or strains or all types of stuff, or you have an illness, um, you know, sickle cell, cancer, you know, all types of things. So, you know, if you have a story and cannabis has really helped you uh, navigate a lot of different things, helped you relieve some of that pain and manage that pain, you know, you need to share your story uh, because that's the only way uh, people are going to understand the value of this plant. You know, if we don't share how this plant is really helping us, you know, not only live and thrive, um, people don't know. You know, people just assume, oh, they're just smoking to get high and laugh. But they don't understand the, the medicinal benefits. They don't understand the body relaxation. Um, they don't understand, you know, the creativity that comes with it, uh, the healing that comes with it internally. Um, the, the connection spiritually, all the different levels of what cannabis truly is. They don't know that you don't have to smoke cannabis. There's edibles, there's tinctures, there's patches, you know, there's all types of different ways. Um, there's all different types of uh, compounds coming from the cannabis plant. So not every, you know, we have to really educate people because people really don't know, you know, and a lot, most people are not going to do their education. Most people are only going to listen to, you know, what people tell them. And so I think that's where we're at. You know, we just really got to keep having the conversations um, and putting it out there, right? Like, we really only been, we only really been at it for what, a couple of years? Shoot, me and you just met. So, you know, it's like our industry here is so brand new. You know, we just got to, you know, keep doing this shit because we are we are so far behind. Like when you see what other states are doing, man, it's just like, I can't hear you, bro. I think you might be. You know what, uh, what I'm trying to say is, no. what I was trying to say is that uh, we, uh, sadly, we're so far behind be because, uh, like, this is a community. This is a cannabis community. We're dealing with the same plant. What are we talking about? Cannabis uh, dominant, medical cannabis dominant, or hemp CBD dominant. Right. Same plant, just different ends of the spectrum. It's like different genetic makeups. Uh, um, if we're talking about conditions like sickle cell, there's different different spectrums, as well as autism, which isn't a qualified condition, but should be. Right. Uh, and we're talking about other states. We're, we're talking about uh how this we're talking about the same plant but how different states are able to regulate and make different rules and regulations which is so mind-boggling and complex which makes it even worse because right. it's like that that's the reason why people are still having these mixed feelings and mixed emotions about this plant if we have a uni uniformity across the damn nation then you know i think it would be way more beneficial and as you like we were saying earlier, we still learning, but people don't even realize, uh, well, two things. We're in this industry, uh, you're your own doctor. You may have a doctor you talk to or get a recommendation from, but unless they like continue to stay uh, in contact with you and check in on you, there's no, uh, it's kind of more of a, a money scheme. And, right. and then also the, people never want to admit that like, because they don't teach about the endocannabinoid system in the medical school, but they never want to admit that uh, there it's almost like vitamins, like you, cannabis, whether you're eating it, you know, uh, smoking it, you basically have to uh, uh, have certain levels, certain amounts in your uh, body right. and continue using it in order for it to build up, like, you know, like, using other cannabinoids and learning about them is definitely beneficial because then you're like, oh, I need full, I want more of a full spectrum uh, right. medicine versus just 
like TAC dominant because people think, oh, I want the strongest. Yeah, okay, then that's how you get more of the uh, psychoactive and, uh, you know, more mind affecting stuff. But if you actually get that the one to one or the, you know, uh, uh, it could be TAC dominant, but as long as it's still a, a, a ratio, it's right. way more beneficial. Right. more full, yeah. full spectrum ben, uh, benefits get that homeostasis that true balance what we all are trying to get and seek in life but shit man uh i don't know it's just it's everybody everyone has their own, own opinion but it's it's you can have your own opinion if you want about this plant but you can't name one other pharmacopoeia uh herb or medicine that that can help so many conditions and in, in uh, uh illnesses like similar not necessarily saying just like the very same way but uh, by similarly i mean in a good way you more than a bad way uh, so I don't know. yeah you just gotta keep trying to fight the good fight but yeah. uh it's education, like we said, like we keep saying, you know, uh, you know, obviously we consume, you know, as patients, um, you know, I know before I became a patient, I definitely was consuming recreationally. You know, I'm at the point in my life where, you know, I, I feel like we need to share our stories, you know, and so because we know there's kids, I mean, we were once kids. Uh, and we know what we had access to and we see what these kids have access to. And so um, it's up to us as leaders to really, you know, be able to share uh, our story and our relationship with the plant, because that's something also I think, you know, cannabis, you have a relationship with cannabis. You know what I mean? Like, this is not something that, you know what I mean? Oh, you just do it. And it's just like, no, there is a like you, you mean, I I ain't tell you about my relationship with my henny bottle. Hey, no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. no, that like, but that don't even sound hand. cool. That don't even sound cool. Like I'd rather, I like having a relationship with a plant actually sound like it, it's possible. You know, like it's by that I mean it's it's earth. You know, it's like a plant grows from earth. That's what I think about it. It's like oh shit. It grows from dirt, soil, or you know, some type of material. You you, you can obviously grow it without just you know hydro without uh, dirt, but that's the thing too about this plant. It's like a weed. It grows like from it. It grows from anything. It's tough to kill. It's resilient. Uh, but Man, again, it's amazing it's, looking at the roots. Like yeah, you can use it from roots to to the top. You know, to the buds. Uh, you use it for things. I, hey, I pulled up my plant, bro. I pulled it up. Oh yeah. Had to chop it. Yeah, it was my it was my science experiment. <laughs> oh yeah. That joint was getting yeah. stress was getting big. I was like, oh yeah. I told you how they get used, bro. <laughs> Especially <laughs> being outside, bro, and we had the uh, days. It was loving that. It was, it was loving that, boy. You would have had you some a nice little uh, self medication. Uh, we got but, too, we got too many planes that fly over the crib. I understand that. Like, we we also live, live in a controlling state right now. Yeah, but one yeah, day. So there's just so much, and I was just, I was I was like, man, like you know that, but that really inspired me. You know what I mean? To really continue to push because it's like. It also just felt good, you know, just being out there and seeing my plants, you know what I mean? Watering my plants, you know what I mean? Like, that shit was just a special feeling. Um, yeah, it's like you're taking care of something and you're watching it grow. It's a living. Right, a living, you know? Uh, it's just like my kids, like, watching my rewarding. baby grow, like, you, you know, really seeing, you know, it go from a seed to, like, I literally watched the whole process to, I was like, you. Right. So, but you know, that's you know, for us, that's what we do. You know, we were farmers. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. 
And so I'll say this is uh, this picture behind me. This is Ohio Cleanleaf. Uh, they're also in the Dayton area. Um, and so I think they were a tier two um, grow um, cultivator. So really nice process. Um, shout out to Jason Cabies. Um, he's the founder oh, yeah. over there. Um, shout out to homie John, John Rice. He showed he yeah, shout him out, him. bro. Like, I mean, at the end of the day, that's what we could do on our platform, man. Like, you know, at the end of the day, we're getting access into these facilities to be able to help educate our community. And so, you know, I think like, you know, that's important to show people like how we get involved, right? Like, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to kind of tell people like, hey, you know, yeah, I work in the industry or I started my own business or I do this. Um, but it's hard to really match that up when you show people pictures and you show people like actual stuff, then people are like, oh, wow, he really did that. Now people really want to know, like, how, how do I do that? You know, so how, right. would, like, how did you get into the legal cannabis industry? Like, what was your, tell us your journey. Um, you know, you don't have to start all the way from just like when you're using, but just like, let's say in the Ohio market, you know, Ohio is a very new market. So how did you get into the dispensary? How did you get into the processing game? Uh, well, I got into the dispensary. I was, uh, I was, uh, always a cannabis advocate on, you know, self-medicating on the low. And uh, ended up uh, having, you know, just from my passion and my, uh, you know, my condition and the way I was, you know, express myself. I had friends that, you know, know my uh, my love for it. I had a friend, a good friend, reach out, let me know that there was going to be open interviews for a dispensary. I, I immediately, you know, hopped on it. We started preparing my resume. Um, went up there, you know, present did, did my best to present myself. Had an interview right there on the spot. And pretty much, you know, got 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 the offer on the spot. Uh, so that was pretty dope. I uh, got my foot in the door at the dispensary. From there, you know, I was able to. I mean, I've always had self-education from uh the cannabis and learning you know, like just from wanting to learn more so i basically took that and then my like drive and initiative to to always want to uh continue to learn with my curiosity and combine them and basically self-taught myself you know at youtube university uh you know important YouTube things university that I need. And google baby right the important things that i need to know on cannabis so uh and then from there you know i like i mean besides actual like experience and that i could actually talk about uh having sickle cell chronic pain and, right. and auto auto autoimmune disorder you know I, I was definitely able to uh realize that you know certain strains with certain terpenes work better with me uh, one of my uh, favorite oh, terps. What are some of those? What are some of those things that help you with somebody that deals with sickle cell anemia? What are some of the strands specifically that help you with with your with your treatment? Well, I ain't gonna say I can't exactly say strains, but I will say you know uh, beta. I can go with terpenes as far as uh, beta carophyllene. Okay. Uh, that's a really dope. Term. Uh, Terp that helps is very beneficial to me. I'm not gonna say the you know the handbook definition that you know you can search on it, uh, but uh, I mean I will say well besides you know it is you know it's peppery smelling, um, earthy. But besides that, like I know it's always helped relax me, more calming. I know it's it's a part of one of my my personal favorite strains, Sunset Sherbert, but. Uh, um it's also you know just a, a very common uh turt but then i also love like pinene limonene even mercine but pinene and limonene more like you know uplifting uh mood changing 
Uh, it just kind of depends, but uh, uh, I feel like I chase well, when when it was able to. I definitely would go off nose nose best. But and to, since since I can't do that, I go off of like I said, like terpenes. Uh, more so uh, the strain. I try to do strain research if I can. But I was able to uh, you know basically use my experience from helping myself and other people trying to like I'm always willing to help others and try to like like thoroughly help them. not just really like oh I help people like no I mean like actually help them to win too you know I'm, I want to win for sure but you can't win without a solid team around you so if I'm you know whoever I'm working for or working with I'm always trying to give them ideas and strategies ways we can better ourselves so i was always bringing in like new materials new education stuff to to stay aware and uh stay you know informed but uh from from there i was able to like you know meet a bunch of patients meet a bunch of industry workers and uh was able to network and decide like all right i wanted to switch it up and do a different side of things. I'm like, uh, let me instead of just uh, just distributing the products or you know dispensing it, um, let me ha- let me actually go somewhere where I can, you know, distribute the products to the dispensary and help create it or come up with ideas to create. It. So that was a uh, kind of how I made that tra- transition to that over the Bentley's process facility. Uh, I was able to, you know, basically. Uh, so um, processing, you got to. This is the industry, right? We got to break the industry down to people because we people are going to see this, and we're talking about this industry. We're talking about how we're not in it. You got the culture. Yeah, well, you got the process. Well, yeah, I almost didn't even want to mention that I'm in it just because of certain things, but you you, heard, you see those rules that we was just reading. Yeah. Well, hopefully, this is not, we, I mean, this is not marketing or advertising. So no, nah, no, nah, you're right. I'm just saying, in general, though, I'm, to to the general public who may view this or see this, it's it's almost like tiptoeing on eggshells. You got to be careful what you do, like clearly. Uh, so, all I want to do is share the truth, shed the light on that. Um, and some of it, you know, a lot of times the truth hurts and sucks. Clearly. Be running into that right now but uh uh like he said we got three areas i mean besides like obviously business operations and and other the government regulations dispensary processing cultivation uh and there's different licenses different applications for all those different uh areas different fees no matter what, they're all, you know, at place at a ridiculous amount that makes it very tough for people of color or, you know, disadvantaged communities, people coming from those areas. Uh, there's no social equity program. Nope. Uh, there's, there's no kind of discount program for the industry workers. Uh, or no black, house- people, black people should, like, at least have a discount. Like, um, they, they yeah, I mean, if there's no equity program, there should definitely be something. But there's there's no way to uh, there's no true support of education, like uh, further yeah, education. continued further education, because it's like almost like you go to a doctor, they tell you this. You go to dispensaries, they can only tell you certain things, but. Right parts outside community education and then like I said continued education there's none of that so there's a lot uh that could be done and changed uh, uh I don't know we could go for days bro I was but just the beginning yeah it's just the beginning just the beginning yeah. of this journey that we're on and here in Ohio yeah. but I mean I think Also, you know, not to get down on it, you know, seeing what's happening nationwide, honestly, is inspirational, you know, so 
It, yeah, it definitely is. Uh, like I said, the only frustrating part is, like, it's encouraging because you got to obviously take the good with the bad. It's like, oh, we are, you know, you're going to have people out there or at least we got something or, you know, there is a program and they're trying to do it right. Sure, but at the same time, why alter the measurements of this thing? Why alter? Why instill a restrictment on the amount of, uh, this material when it's not quite like that in other states if you're trying to make money or make uh, people spin not even just spin but like spin for the right cause or reason how if if it's not like designed for them uh, so I don't know I think uh more states need to work together like their government officials if they if allowed obviously we need the higher power to maybe soon declassify this thing or, or yeah we need federal legalization yeah we need that we need them to change it the classification of it first so that like literally everybody like all these states should be able to like be almost uniform. Or right. Like at least. Well, you can't travel with it, right? Certain states, right. you can't, you know. So interstate commerce uh, and then being able to send weeds from one place to another, you know, distribute it. I can get like, a shot of Grey Goose on the air, in the air, bro. Hey. Like, that's sad. Technically, I could get myself, uh, what do you call it? Sky sickness. <laughs> right. Like poison myself with a. So how does that work with y'all? Like when you uh, are delivering, can y'all get pulled over? That's a, 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 a yet to find out. So like what happens a, if y'all get pulled over? That's a good question. We no one knows. Even you know, like we're waiting to find out. You see when you get there. <laughs> you see, it's literally that's something that even you know. Yeah, the owners we've discussed. Uh, yeah, we found this. <laughs> we found this chocolate. <laughs> Guy says he's with the cultivator. He's with a distributor. It's legal distributor. They probably literally run just like the license or check every little thing. Well, and that's the thing too. Like you know, the cultivators. Like, huh? Like they don't just get ran up on. <laughs> I mean, they will. It just depends on what they do and like how they follow. Like this, it's rude. I mean, we could go through the little rules for that too, man. It's it's crazy how they have it finally written out, written down, or written in law. But they made sure. They made yeah, sure we wasn't in that joint. Not just that, but they just made sure it's like for those that are able to own, they have they do have some strict rules and regulations. But as long as they follow those, they're right. they're going to continue to be wealthy. Like it's nothing. But uh, what do you think about the Ohio Black Medical Cannabis Conference? How does that sound? Or cooperatives? Oh, uh, medical things. That's a, I mean, that's not bad at all. It Education, sounds, sounds... career fair and development, expungements, policy discussion, business development. Yeah, hey, okay. that's that sounds like something uh beneficial as long as it's especially focused on people that are not or getting left out basically because uh you can't in ohio you can't work in the program if you got any kind of former record or anything right. with cannabis no you matter what level what no say that again i'm pretty sure as long as you got any kind of cannabis cannabis charge you can't work in in the uh, in the industry like, industry at all like no matter what yeah, level it is i was playing with this earlier um, but uh, yeah, I don't know. You said what? Oh, what does it? The Ohio black. Oh, nice. But you know, we got. I mean, we got to start doing something because our people is not getting educated 
at all. This joke. Uh, and people gotta be willing to be open minded and. Uh, well, we gotta open their minds, bro. I think we could unlock it. You know, our generation, we smoking. We we're consuming. So we're just not organized. We're consuming uh, in the legacy market, right? Like we we yeah, understand yeah. our culture and we understand that it's like, oh, I'm not about to pay for that when I can get it from up the street. Like, right? I'm, I'm but the sad part is when it comes to the industry. Our our, uh, our generation, sadly, is the one like right, we're headed to the to be in charge but right now it's a generation that's still brainwashed that's in charge of things so uh, that's who we really need to uh for not, i mean obviously our generation too we got to talk to but i'm saying that's we got to find ways to crack the, the older generation uh, because they're the ones that that you know vote and, or you know they vote more and they they uh, control a lot of the things right now but I mean, from my experience in the dispensary, there, there was a lot of, there is a lot of like elderly uh, patients too that's involved in the program. So maybe once something does come back around uh, on a ballot for cannabis, it will be uh, uh, more favorable. But hopefully it's something that's actually in favor of the patients, not just the state of Ohio. Uh, Something else I was gonna say. I forgot. Uh um dang, slipped my mind. Besides uh education, uh like well, I don't know, I just feel like uh this should be a community, this should be a community uh of like just a you know. We got to um, build like a cooperative, bro, like a literally a cooperative, you know, where we we put on events, we put on, you know, networking things. We because that's what we don't have. Right. Like we typically don't have like safe spaces for us, let alone spaces that are uh, uh, helping us uh, advance in career, you know, and so. You know, when you're looking at the cannabis industry, you need to be around people uh, that are in the industry doing different things in the industry. You need to be around um, all the different, you know, uh, industry leaders uh, because that's what's going to make your industry better. And so, again, like you said, you got your job because somebody told you about an open interview. You went to the interview and you got the gig. Well, most people aren't getting that relationship. You know, they're not getting that person who's saying, hey, you, you know, there's a, you know, open invite to work at a dispensary. You know, uh, some people can't even make it to the job because they may not have a car. Right. So there's so many different barriers, especially when your community, our community has been hit hard by the war on drugs, you know, um, and they've been locking us up for the same plant now that's, you know, perfect. Well, the, the, besides us, I think we, obviously it's going to take us to maybe start a move or start a trend or movement, but I think we're going to need more of those people, though, that were affected to start coming to light and speaking up about right. their, uh, sufferings or stories because that's the only way to get real that real emotion out there and, and people to get thinking and feel some kind of way. Right. <clears throat> yeah. And I mean, we know it's a lot in Ohio. Like, Ohio got a lot of jails. Charged by doing that. Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, excited to see. Oh, damn, but speed the heart. Try, excited to see uh, 
Well, I'm excited, but also a little anxious to see how uh, progress is going to be made in this industry. Uh, there's already 73 dispensaries, so it's been uh, recently announced that you're in there. When are those supposed to start um, rolling out? Well, that I don't know when, but I know that they're they're announcing that they're going to you know, allow that number. And I believe you know, people are probably been already applying or you know saving up to apply. I don't know one. But do we know if there's any equity clause in this seventy three? Or is it I think it's a lottery, right? I don't know. You have more I don't know. I haven't heard anything about equity. But we'll see. Is it an opportunity for them to do something like that? Uh, glare. The light looks like it's shining through my damn self for real in the picture. <laughs> Huh? I said that light looked like it's shining through myself for real on the on this on that L, uh, LED picture. Oh, uh, I'm blowing. Blowing up over there. No, I don't know. It says it says Gerald Moore Jr. has started screen sharing. Oh yeah, I'm uh I just pulled up the uh medical marijuana Ohio government page. Oh they recently had let's see. Why is it not? I can't see it. Or I don't know if you can I'm on the phone. Could be because I'm on the phone, but I don't know. Probably let me see. Usually it's showing. Microphone muted. There we go. Now, regardless of what you So they had a, a medical marijuana advisory committee, June 2021 meeting agenda. Yep. I didn't catch it, but I know they did have it. Get some updates. So got all their names. Seems to me like the person representing the patient should really be trying more to, to actually hear from the patient. Robert Cole was what Wazowski. So the state of Ohio Board of Pharmacy today published an update of patient and caregiver numbers for May 2021. 296,488 recommendations, 207,105 registered patients, 13,020 patients with veteran status, 14,388 patients with uh, indigenous uh, status, 806 patients with terminal diagnosis, 166,966 unique patients who purchased medical marijuana as reported by OARRS by licensed dispensaries, I don't know what that means, and 22,784 registered caregivers. Uh, for the full list of program numbers, visit program Okay. 
I'm just looking at something. How'd you wait? Where'd you see that most recent? Uh, you wanna know how you wanna know how much money they made off of uh product sales? Where are you at? Because I'm on that same, I'm on the like page, but I don't see nothing. Uh, you're on the uh program update, maybe. There we yeah, go. Yeah, yep, type all right. I got you. Yeah. So yeah, sales figures. Damn. Half a billion, <laughs> bro. Where's that tax that, money going, bro? That is that's sad. That's sad. Where they, is that tax so money at, in. son? I'm taking half a billion, bro. And they they've been oh, this function. This program has been like written in law since like 2016, 2017. But the program's only been up and running for a little over two years. And you take that much money from the people and don't like show them nothing back. Like what? All right, so check this out. April 30th, 2019, when the program first started, 673 pounds of plant material, 5.2 million dollars in product sales. Uh, 5.8 million dollars, 6.5 million dollars, 6.7 million dollars. Eight or eight point oh million dollars, eight or eight million dollars, eight point seven million dollars, nine point seven million dollars, uh, ten point six million, eleven so, five million. Can you explain to me? Do you think other states are charging thirty one dollars per tenth of an ounce? Thirty one dollars per. Not obviously. Yeah, I'm not saying like. Uh, Cannabis isn't expensive in other places. No, what I'm saying is Bro, they are you're gonna you're gonna get at least full A for the expensive amount you're gonna pay versus here in Ohio, you get 2.83. I mean, mm -hmm. and I mean I've heard plenty of people saying they stuff has been short. Now, oh yeah, because the cultivators don't realize that oh things dry up as it's sitting in a container. Mm -hmm. And instead of being thoughtful and considerate and doing heavier. They'll so stingy. They'll look like do exact weight, and then it dries up. It's like your loss for the patient. Like that's again how they get over on the patients. Like, like man, it's sad. They nickel and dime them, the patients, and like you know, take continue to rob the sick. Like the rich just continue to get wealthier while the sick continue to use their last bit of money to try to get better and live right. better. Yeah. yeah, these numbers are crazy. You see it's, it's numbers, definitely, bro? I will say, if you look, if you want to compare, there will be, of course, there's more indigent people out, out in the veteran. That's be, just simply because there's more true sick people and poor people. Like, right. like I don't understand how they don't get this. Like, and no offense to none of the veterans or anything. I'm saying, in general, like this program is too costly. Like, right. they, yeah. But they can quick, quickly make four hundred billion, bro. Four hundred million. Um, product sales. Franklin County only has one cultivator. Yeah, uh, Chisel. Chisel. And I just learned that about that. I think. Green investment. That's level partners. one. That's level one. Check, check. Level two. Maybe. But see, this is something we could have been. We'll we have to do it next time. Break it down like just bit by bit. Franklin Green Investment, they got it again on level two again. Can a man?
I got all the information right here too, bro. So this is definitely clutch. Yeah, I'm looking at it. I saw that on booty. Half a billy. Yeah, and like again, they be they have these meetings every month. Every month, or we need to go at all the people that's on the board. Advisory board. What's the other? What's the other levels of the? Uh, who who controls the program? Uh, in commerce. Yeah. The Department of Commerce too. Board of Pharmacy and Department of Commerce. Canada, Franklin, cultivator license, green investment partners, two different cultivators. Yeah, man. Feel like uh, it's a solid talk tonight, man. Uh, just gotta yeah. keep it going and building. No, nah, I like I like when we get to chop it up, bro. Because I think, you know, again, this is what it takes. It's gonna be. It's not easy. Obviously, it feels easy. Everybody be doing it, you know. But I also think, you know, we're in a position where we could really make a change. Uh, for you know our community, so I think the only way we can do that though is by using our voices, you know, and trying to reach as many people as possible, so people can understand, hey, what's going on here, uh, because our laws aren't the same as everybody else's. So people in other states, you know, they have the freedom to consume, and you have cannabis lounges and all types of things going on, uh, but then here, you know. You really can't do that stuff. You know, you can't even consume together, right? Like everything has to be behind closed doors in a sense. Um, and so it's, um, you know, so much going on that I think, you know, we need to, it's up to us. If we don't do it, we, we're not seeing anybody else do it. Um, and how long we going to wait, you know, for somebody else to come around and say, hey, you know, we'll, we'll, We'll take this, we'll take this torch and run with it. So again, man, I appreciate you, man, and all the hard work you do. Uh for sure. You definitely helped me out. Um, learning about the game, learning about the plant. Um, so just keep doing your thing, you know, and we definitely gonna keep educating uh, and informing. Yep. Yeah. Likewise, no doubt. We gotta where can the people find you at, man? Like, what's your what's your social media, man? Tell the people to follow you. Man, I ain't really big on social media. Well, I don't know if why. they want to reach out yeah. to you, uh, oh, give them your email or something. Tell them they can come and take a tour. Catch me, catch me uh, um, reach me at Broderick at Benelis. Potentially uh, reach out to discuss a tour i'm gonna to say everyone's uh well everyone's welcome but I, I can't just invite anyone but uh <laughs> basically i would love to show you know anyone's that's truly interested in <laughs> av 
Don't, don't just be trying plant. to come through thinking you about to get some free weed, basically. Yeah, because it's it's not like it's it's, not like these it. rules I gotta follow, this regulation. And that's the thing. Come come ready to get educated. Don't come right. expecting free things or or uh you know handouts basically. Like yep. uh you know, uh, it's a business and, and that's the thing too. People gotta it's a medical it's business somewhere it's it's definitely a medical business, but it's this plant. It has so many stereotypes and, and, and stigmas that it's sad that like the most important part of it is uh getting you know washed away by capital and that's is that is medical to so many things and people or not things but people and and things by things I mean conditions so uh yeah other than that man uh Roger got been leaves and Reach me at uh, Canavisions, uh, C A N N A I V I Z I O N S, on Instagram. But not that socially active, man. I'm more so. Uh, you, do you do the work. You do the work, big dog. So, like, I feel like sometimes social media can uh, cause, you know, this depression or stress to people if they don't, you know, they. Mm-hmm misuse it so uh i try to only use mine as a part of uh or like as a voice or in a manner to use it uh, as a voice you know to speak bring something to the light you know obviously we're talking about cannabis so that's kind of why i use mine that way but but my bad i ain't mean to go on that little rant but that's just, right. <laughs> i'm different <nigga. laughs> <laughs> We need the education, bro. We got to let these youngins know, man. Everybody, uh, you know, social media ain't for everybody. You, sh- you should be using your social media to promote, you know, if you got a business or you got, you know, passion, that's what you should use your social media for. So I, I think, mean, yeah, use it to chase goals yeah. like, or dreams. You know, not, not don't to be just... sitting there comparing yourself to everybody, you know, trying to do everybody else look, look like everybody else. You should be doing your own thing. Yeah, so I think that's yeah, you, I think that they, I think that's a very important conversation. So, you know, yeah, you can to motivate see. others, man. <laughs> so you know, everybody, you know, going to use their social media for different things. But at the end of the day, we need to understand. I think a lot of people in our community, specifically the younger generation, need to understand that you know all that comparison stuff is only going to lead to you know uh, trauma. You know, like. You know, and so you looking like everybody else or trying to keep up with everybody else. Like we talk about keeping up with the Joneses and all of that, you know, that stuff is not good. So right. You know. Uh, it's, you find uh more success when you tend to drown out all the neck, you know, all the distractions and just hone in and focus on your craft or what you enjoy. So that's what I did. That's what got me here, man. Keep, try to keep that's it that way. That's why you big in the game. We talking pounds, baby. <laughs> See the pound, future pounds behind me. No. All right. <laughs> Ooh, <man. laughs> you the one got the pounds behind you right now. <laughs> hey, bro. I was like, yo, can I move in? Just, can a brother move in, bro? I just. I'm I like, just where do I clock in? Like, just let me take a whole rack of this back to the crib. Yeah, you know I mean, we don't, we don't even got to say nothing happened. You know, it's just crazy, bro. Like, that need to be my crib right there. But the whole time they, this program just holding out. Yeah. I know now, uh, shoot. You got to tell people to reach you too, man, before we go. Uh, yeah, you can follow out. me. You can follow me at Gerald Moore Jr. on Instagram. Uh, you can also follow Athletes and Cannabis. Uh, that's another uh, platform that I have. Uh, also, I failed to mention that I am the president of Green Environmental Outreach, a nonprofit 501c3 uh, based in Springfield, Ohio. And we focus on uh, green uh, environmental so and green environment. So renewable energy, sustainable community gardens, uh, education on everything, all things green. So uh, you can follow us at GL Nonprofit, 
check out our website, geononprofit.org. Uh, and yeah, just stay up to date with what we got going on there. Uh, always looking for donations and support, always looking for volunteers uh, to really help us beautify our community, uh, give out fresh food and vegetables uh, to a community that doesn't really have a lot of fresh food options. So um, that's part of the work that I'm doing there. And yeah, just be on the lookout for more content from me and Broderick. Uh, follow us, like us on, uh, on this page. I'm going to put this on my YouTube. Uh, I'll share it on uh, all the different socials. So LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, you know, the whole, whole thing, Instagram. Uh, and yeah, follow us, uh, put some things in the comments. If you like what we talked about, if you want us to touch on some other subjects, other topics, uh, yeah, just reach out to us, you know? So uh, we want to get other people on as well. So if you have a, if you're from Ohio or you're from a market, uh, that has cannabis legalization issues or you're doing equity, uh, we want to talk to you. So uh, we want to- Only if you're willing to help Ohio though. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I was just playing. Well, no, I mean, we, we, we will talk to you. People, man, but, that, you know, can help. I mean, we need to be able to emulate what other people are doing, right? So yeah, if nah. you did something that got them, you know, a bill passed, you know, like we need to be looking at that because Virginia nah, is technically sure. the South. You know, so that's pretty big if a southern state. So you got to think about like South Carolina, all these other states that are going to be, you know, switching over. So it's, I mean, it's a big deal. Um, it is. It's important for. You just got to, you know, Ohio, I feel like is cool with being slow. You know, <laughs> they cool with being like late to the party uh, instead of being the trendsetter, you know. Uh, I mean, I, I agree. But the thing is, too, where well, I have importance and the whole reason we're doing this is so that we get more people involved or, or like aware because if if more people speak up and provide their stories or share how this plan actually helps provide a better quality of life, then, uh, you know, it get more respect, I feel like, versus just let's take our time because they're playing with people's lives, and that's kind of the fr- that's what's so frustrating. Because you know, you, as a government, you can literally just take your time on people's fate right. in a lot of ways. So that's kind of not cool because this is a plan. But, uh, but uh, as you said, I don't know. Reach out on social media, benelise.com, Facebook, Instagram. Also, if you're in Ohio. Reach out to your uh, state representatives. If you are oh, yeah. for cannabis legalization, if you're for, uh, you know, home grow, uh, reach out to your state representatives. You can email them. Uh, you can tweet them. You can go to their offices. You can call them. Uh, it is COVID all right. Might stop that. Duty. Huh? I said COVID might have stopped the office visits, but don't, yeah. don't let it stop you. Yeah, you know, uh, so, you know, we're going to be, we need to do stuff where we're showing up at the state hall or the state capitol. You know, I wanted to roll a joint on the state capitol and just blow one down. You know? Or like, actually, if you, if you can't make it in person, go to the online meetings or uh, yeah. panels. Yeah. To, you just, I don't know, man. It's, it's Do whatever you can to get involved but, and add your voice to the conversation. Let's not be lazy stoners. Just like actually take action and show that you can use cannabis and uh, be productive and proactive, and uh, you know, just involved. I guess. Right. I, like, can, but yeah. yeah. All right. This is a long yeah. video. <laughs> One forty-five. We wrapping it up. You know how we, we get. might have to chop it up. We might. Yeah, have to chop we'll, it up. I'll break it up into two. But, you know, this is how we get, you know, that's the beautiful thing of it, bro, right? Like, we've been able to chop it up for a whole 145. Got our cannabis in the background, had our you know, little smoke session. And we're going to chop it up. But, all right. Good talks. Have a good night, brother. All right, you too, my G, for sure. Peace. Uh, peace.